today's video we're going to look at that beautiful crystal clean sand, also known as Milton Cleans. If you don't know the sand I'm talking about, go and listen to some tesseracts, some monuments or some fell silence. Basically the bands that gained a lot of momentum in Milton Keynes, hence the name. One thing about this sound is that you generally track multiple octaves of the same thing to get the desired effect. You can use a pitch shifter, but it always sounds worse than if you just record separate takes of the different octaves. And then how you recreate that live is then your problem. These sounds were born out of modelers, specifically the old parts like the Pod XT Pro. You may have seen my video on how to recreate it with pedals, but in this video we're going to keep it completely inside the box and I'm going to use my Axe FX2. And there are multiple ways to achieve this. This is just my sort of broad strokes kind of approach. And I've got this patch set up so it gives me a few different options without having to completely recreate it each time. So let's look at the patch. Okay, so here's the basic patch with pretty much everything deactivated. I should mention these aren't the newest strings. Patiently wait for payday before I restring most of my guitars, but it's still a super bright, super articulate sound, which you'll hear shortly. I'm also using the piezo pickup on this guitar. If you don't have one yourself, that's okay. You can still make the sound using the magnetic pickups. I'm going to do a separate video on how to do that. But the piezo sounds so good to me, that's what I like to use most of the time. Now, the piezo signal itself is quite a brittle, almost semi-acoustic kind of sound, and it's quite weak on its own. So it needs some amplification. So we'll start here with the amp. We're using the USA Clean model. Drives most of the way down. It's not really doing anything except adding volume. We have boosted the master volume slightly and the level's at zero. The EQ is pretty much flat. The piezo is quite a specific sound, so I tend not to mess with this unless I really need to. If I was using a magnetic pickup, I would have to adjust the EQ here, but for the purpose of this video, it's fine as it is. And the main thing about the sound is what's not here. You'll notice there's no cab anywhere in this signal chain. And that's part of the sounds. Not having a cab means that the high frequencies aren't rolled off in the way that a real cab or a cab model would. And that's what gives us that really glassy sound. But currently it's still very quiet and very uneven. So we're gonna add a compressor at the front of the signal chain. I'm using the pedal comp. Left the comp where it was because it sounded good as soon as I turned it on. There's just enough attack to leave the front end of the note coming through and making sure we're getting lots of attack. And I've boosted the level slightly just for a bit more volume. The chorus is a, an optional step really, as I showed in my pedal video. You don't really need this, it just adds a little bit of variety to the sound. I've got the mix way down here at 16%, it's the analog stereo model. And I haven't really touched any of these, but you could mess with this to taste to make all your tones slightly different. It just adds a little bit of movement to the dry signal. Okay, we can ignore this delay for now because that's an optional extra, but after the amp's where the magic happens. What we've got going on here looks complex, but it's not. We've got a clean signal going straight to this mixer. We've got one path going through the delay and another path going to the reverb with a little bit of messing around here with pitch shifters, but ignore that for now. We'll start with the delay line. Again, this is to taste, but for me, the Milton Clean sound is a really sterile, crystally sound, so I like the digital stereo model for this. Again, the subdivisions and tempo that you use will be specific to the song that you're writing, but I've got the mix at 100% because we're in parallel, and just a little bit more feedback up at 32%. So that sounds like this. And that already sounds a little bit more magical. This pitch shifter is optional, and I tend to use this when I'm not using this one down here. So we can safely ignore that for now. 
Although that delay sounds great, we really need the reverb to make it really sing. Now I've chosen the cavern model. There's so many great models in here, but we want that cavernous kind of sound, so this looks like the right one for the job. I boosted the time, it's nine seconds. You can go completely ridiculous with this, but this is sounding nice for this patch. We're 100% mix again, because we're in parallel. But the reverb isn't doing all the heavy lifting on its own here. If you watch my video doing this with pedals, you saw that I used a Walrus Audio Descent pedal, which I've recently sold. But I'm kind of replicating how that works here. I've got effectively a copy of the clean signal going into this mixer, which is feeding the reverb. But I've also got a pitch shifted version here. I've got it on fixed harmony mode, and that's giving us a 12 semitone and 24 semitone shift. So effectively one octave and two octaves up. Got them slightly detuned just for a little bit more separation in the sound. And in terms of the voices, voice one is 100%, and voice two is at 52%, or roughly 50. That's just so that the really high octave doesn't get overwhelming when it starts to go through the reverb. Now both that clean signal and the pitch shifted signal both meet in this mixer here. The Axe Effect sees that as channel three and four. Currently they're both at 100%, but if I wanted more of the pitch shifted sound, I just need to duck this, and vice versa if I want just a little bit less. Now this means that the reverb is gonna get multiple sources to generate a reverb tile from, the clean signal as well as these awesome pitch shifted sounds. So if I just get rid of the clean and the delay, so you can hear exactly what this is doing. Such a great atmospheric sound. And when we add that to our clean signal and also our delayed signal, a really beautiful atmospheric sound that you can use in so many different ways. This final mixer just gives me control of the relative levels of the clean tone coming through here, the delay up here and the reverb. They all meet here. As you can see I've got the reverb just slightly lower than the other two just because that's how it sat in this uh, particular instance. But again you've got lots of options within this. You control the different reverb models, you can do all sorts of different delays, you can feed a pitch shifter into the delay if you want that kind of sound. You could get rid of this pitch shifted reverb thing completely, or you can even add a delay in front of the amp for those really rhythmic delay applications. So it's not as complex as it first sounded, and this is the finished tone, and then we'll try and do an in-context example. <laughs> 